continuing from the previous lecture. Let's now discuss a few more methods that can help us understand CNN and its predictions. Let's start with a question which is a bit different from what we saw in the previous lecture. The question is, can we find an image that maximizes a class score? So an AlexNet or any other network, when trained on ImageNet, has been exposed to a lot of, for example, say cat images. So at the end of training, does AlexNet know what an average cat looks like? If we ask it to reconstruct an image of a cat, can it do it? Is the question that we are trying to ask. Can you think of how we can do this? In case you don't have the answer, you can do this using a different use of the gradient descent approach that we used for updating the weights of a neural network. And this was first introduced by a work called Deep Inside Convolutional Networks in 2014. And the idea here is you take the trained AlexNet model and you provide a zero image as input. A zero image could be a black image or a gray image. You can choose whichever ones you'd like. And you give this as input to the CNN model. And you now want uh, the final prediction to be a, a one hot vector where the one is in the position of the cat or any other class that you want to uh, get an image of and zeros in all other places. That's what you'd like to see at the last layer, at the output classification layer. But obviously when you feed a zero image as input, you will not be able to get that. You'll probably get a different probability vector. Based on the difference between these two, you have a loss. You can now update your network. But this time, you're not going to update your network. You're going to do what we call backprop to image. What is backprop to image? If you had a loss in the last layer, we've spoken so far on different ways of computing dou L by dou W, depending on what weight you're trying to compute the gradient of. If it's the last layer, it's straightforward. If it's an intermediate layer, you use chain rule. If it is convolutional layer, you have to think through it a bit differently. Batch normalization layer, you have to work these things out, so on and so forth. We have been able to do that. Can we extend this to compute dou L by dou X, where X is the input? It can be done. This is just another version of chain rule. You'll just have to carefully work out dou L by dou X through all the activations and weights in the neural network. If you don't believe it, try it out as homework to work it out. Once you have such a gradient, we try to do an image update. And how do we do the image update? We do it using gradient ascent. So far, we spoke about gradient descent as a methodology to minimize an objective function. In gradient ascent, we maximize an objective function and we will see this objective function in the next slide. So we will use gradient ascent to, to get the final image. So once you do a small image update, the updated image, so it could have been an initial zero image and after doing an update, the x becomes different now, or the i becomes different, assuming this image is i, which is equal to x for us. Now you, the i becomes a new iterated update i, and that is forward propagated through the network. You again get an output, you compare it with the expected output, which should have one at the position of a cat and zeros elsewhere, and you repeat this process over and over again. What could be the objective function? The objective function is formally written as you want to argmax over i, where i is the input image, sc of i, which is the scores that you have in the last layer, sc of i is when you propagate i through the network and get scores in the last layer. You want to find an i that maximizes the score corresponding to a particular class and you have a regularizer on the image just so that you won't overfit. Remember, because this is a maximization problem, you have a negative sign because you'd ideally like to minimize the two norm of the image. 
that is the reason for the negative sign. So, how do you solve this problem? Because it is a maximization problem, you use gradient ascent. So, you go in the positive direction of the gradient and keep climbing and keep updating the image over and over again and at the end after many iteration when the gradient between your output and your expected output in the last layer is close to zero, you would have converged and you would have got one such image. Let us see a few examples. So, here are a few images that maximize a class score. Okay, this may not feel like the way we perceive these images, but this is what the model thinks is representative of those objects. So, any such artifacts in an image, it is going to consider it as belonging to an object. So, the top left is a washing machine, below is a goose, you can actually see that there is a structure of a goose located at different points, then you have an ostrich, a limousine, a computer keyboard and so on and so forth. You can do such an optimization not just with respect to the last layer. You can do this with respect to any neuron in the neural network. You can try to see if you want to find out which image maximally activated a neuron. We saw in the previous lecture that we keep forward propagating several images and then see which all images fire a particular neuron. That would have been one way of doing it. But now what we can do is start with a gray image or a zero image forward propagate your image until a particular layer, let us say you have a particular neuron in one layer that you wanted to uh, maximize, that you wanted to uh, fire for a particular image, then you go forward propagate until that layer, you set the gradient with respect to that neuron to be 1 and everything else to 0 which means you want that to fire and you back propagate from there and update the input image iteratively using gradient ascent and you will now be able to get an average image that fires that particular neuron. Another addendum that was proposed in the same work in fact was the concept of just visualizing the data gradient. So, uh, how do you go about doing it? Which means we are talking about do L by do I in this case. Remember we are saying that I is equal to X which is the input image for us. So, we have a do L by do I which gives us uh, the gradient of the output with respect to the input. So, in our case we are defining L as SC of I, that is the score that we want to maximize. It is not a loss here, but it is a maximization of the score. But because you have three channels in your input, how do you understand this gradient by itself? You can, this paper suggests that you take an absolute value of the gradient along each channel and then take the maximum of those as the final gradient at a particular pixel location. Instead of trying to update an image iteratively, this suggests that simply visualizing that gradient will tell you the shape of that gradient gives you a rough picture of what maximizes that particular output neuron because there is color, you take the maximum among those and you assume that that could be a good representation. Here are a few examples. So, here you see a sailboat and you see that these are the pixels that had the highest gradient across the color channels which maximize the score. Similarly, this one for the dog and this one for this object and so on and so forth. So, what can you do with this gradient? Okay, it does seem to give us an indication of which part of the image is responsible or probably uh, caused the particular probability score to go up. They suggested that you could join this with a segmentation method known as grab cut, which can be applied on the data gradient to get an object mask. Grab cut is an extension or adaptation of the graph cut segmentation that we saw earlier in this course. Using this, if you had an input image and you get the gradient corresponding to a particular class, then using those gradients and this grab cut segmentation algorithm, which is a way of taking those pixels and segmenting the region around them, you end up getting a mask in the input image, 
which is responsible for a particular class to be predicted. Here are a couple of more examples. So you see especially the third row a bit more clearer. You can see here that you have a bird, its data gradient, then you use grab cut to segment out that object from the background and you get a nice mask of the object which you can use for other purposes. For details of grab cut, please see this link below. And that's also an exercise for you in this lecture to see how grab cut can be used with the data gradient to obtain these kinds of masks. Another question that we can ask here is given the FC7 representation of data in a CNN, so that's the output representation of the FC7 layer or the fully connected seventh layer of AlexNet, is it possible to reconstruct the original image? In the last lecture, we saw that a two-dimensional uh, embedding of these representations from FC7 layer do seem to capture semantics and similar images seem to be put together in that embedding space. But now we are going further and asking, if I gave you a code of a particular object, can you reconstruct how that object looks doing some kind of an inverse mapping? How do you think you would do this? This can be done again by solving an optimization problem with two criteria. One, we'd like the reconstructed images code to be similar to the code that we are given. By code, we mean the representation of the F obtained at the output of the FC7 layer. And the second is we want that image to look as natural as possible. We are going to call that image prior regularization or image regularization. So we'll keep these two criteria in the objective function, which means what we're going to get is x star is going to be a minimization problem over phi of x. Phi of x is uh, take x, propagate it through AlexNet and take the FC7 layer output. That's what we refer as phi of x. It's a function which we are calling as phi of x. We want the phi of x that we optimize through this process to be close to the phi naught which is given to us. So remember, we said there is a code given to us. We want to find an image whose code is close to the code that we have in our hand. So we are trying to do that using an optimization approach. Take an x, phi x minus phi naught must be minimized. The mean square error between them must be minimized. And you add a regularizer on top of x, similar to what we saw on the earlier slide. This is just an image regularization step. Here are some results using the AlexNet model. So this is done by taking the log probabilities for the ImageNet classes in the last layer. So for this is the original image and this corresponds to a particular class in ImageNet. And we are now trying to take that class or that representation for this particular image, sorry, not the class, that representation of that particular image and then trying to reconstruct similar images that would give the same FC7 representations. Why five different images? If you go back to the previous slide, you see that this is an optimization problem on x, which means you would start with a value of x and then do gradient descent to keep updating x until you got a minimum value on this objective function. So if you start with different x's, you will get different solutions and those are the different solutions that you see here. So these are with five different initializations. And you see that there is an overall similarity to the original image which we wanted to reconstruct. Here are more examples. This is the original image. We take the FC7 representation of that original image and then ask this kind of an optimization methodology to rediscover that original image whose representation would have been that FC embedding that was given to us. And you see a fairly uh, close uh, reconstruction here. Similarly, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Moving further, we talk about an important method called guided backpropagation that was developed in 2015 that helped improve the performance while visualizing data gradients. Let's look at this approach. It's sometimes also called the deconvolution method of visualizing and understanding CNNs. 
but the more popular name today is guided backpropagation. So guided backpropagation is actually used along with other explanation methods in more recent years, which we will see in later slides in this week. Let's once again start with AlexNet. Let's, uh, and of course, needless to say, AlexNet can be replaced with any other model of a CNN. We are only explaining all these methods using AlexNet. Let's take the AlexNet model. Let's feed an image into the trained AlexNet model. Let's pick a layer and set the gradient there to zero, except for one particular neuron, which we want to maximally activate. Let's assume that this is our setting. So the way we would go about it is you take the input image, you will forward propagate it through as many layers. And remember, you have a ReLU activation function in AlexNet. And what does the ReLU activation function do? In any layer where you have such a matrix, such a set of activations in any layer, wherever there are negative values denoted by these red boxes here, you replace them with zero and anything that is non-negative is retained as it is. That's the standard ReLU operation. Now, when you do this, you can then backprop to the image as we just mentioned because we want to set the gradient of a particular neuron to be one, everything else to zero in that layer, and then backprop from there to the image and do gradient ascent on the image to understand which image maximally activated that neuron in that con3 layer, for instance. And when we backpropagate, remember that if these were your gradients, right? let's assume that what you see here were your gradients, we know that because of the effect of ReLU, wherever there were negative values, those were, these were the locations, the red ones there, there the gradient would become zero because when you backpropagate, it will get multiplied by the activations in those locations when you go through chain rule. And because the activations at those locations become zero, the gradient will also become zero. And this is what you'll be left with which you backpropagate further to reconstruct the original image. Note here that in this particular location, in this particular uh, representation of the gradients, the gradient values can be negative or positive. It is just that where the input was negative, the gradient becomes zero there. In the other locations, the gradient can be negative or positive. And when you do this, you can visualize your data gradient and you can see an image that looks somewhat like a cat here. If you observe closely, you can get the gradients that correspond to an outline of a cat. While it has some resemblance to the cat, you can also make out that it is fairly noisy. So what can you do about it? So to handle this scenario, guided backpropagation, which is a method proposed in 2015, proposed that instead of using in the backward pass, instead of allowing all the gradients to pass through, let's not allow the negative gradients to pass through. What does it mean? We are saying here, originally we said when the input is greater than zero, only those gradients will pass through because the rest of the gradients uh, would have been cut off by the ReLU which was applied in the forward pass. But now, we are now adding that the gradient must also be non-negative when you propagate. Rather, if you went to the previous slide, in addition to making these four zeros, you would also make this minus two a zero, this minus one a zero, and minus one a zero. Only the positive gradients will be passed through to the previous layers when you do your uh, gradient update for the reconstructed image. And doing this greatly improves the final visualization of the data gradient and now you get a clearer image of the cat in the data gradient. Why does this happen? Because you allowed negative gradients to propagate, even aspects of the image that negatively correlated with the outcome in a particular neuron also contributed to coming up with this reconstruction of the image. By removing those, we now retain only those pixels that had a positive impact on the activation of a neuron in one of the layers that we are interested in. This is known as guided backpropagation 
And this is something that we'll use in other methods in the rest of this week's lectures also. The recommended readings for this lecture are once again the lecture notes of CS231N on visualizing CNNs as well as three papers, Deep Inside Convolutional Networks, Visualizing and Understanding Convolutional Networks in ECCV and Striving for Simplicity, the All Convolution Net, which was the paper that introduced guided backpropagation. And one exercise, use this link hyperlinked here to understand GrabCut and how it can be used to generate masks using data gradients. Mm -hmm.